page. <laughs> I don't want to hear you say that. Put that umbrella around while I take it off you. Warum? <laughs> How do you move from a spoon feeding culture to one where students learn independently? It was a problem identified by Ofsted at Carsholton Boys, a non selective school in a selective authority. John Bailey's working with Stephen Black, who heads up the English department, where 47% of students gained 5A to C's at GCSE, an upward trend. Stephen now wants to use independent learning to make further progress. It's a year 10 lower ability GCSE class, and Stephen's line managing Vanessa Anser in her second year of teaching. Her target is to encourage students to take more responsibility for their own learning. <laughs> Vanessa previously worked in advertising, and she's using her creative skills to encourage the boys to write a piece of original coursework. OK, boys, if you can just write down the title for today and the aim in your books. Well, I'm going to show you a series of pictures, three pictures to begin with, and I want you to tell me the story that's behind each of these pictures. Got a nice voice, and she sounds like a singer, doesn't she? Absolutely, yeah, yeah, she does, yeah. She's got a great voice, yeah. She does look skin as he's falling down. What's the story, though? I just... just fell off a dumpty <laughs> Essentially, he fell off a wall. Yeah. A suicidal egg. <laughs> uh, a suicidal egg. He's got problems at home. He wants to go free. Possibly got problems at home, yeah. He wants to go free range. <laughs> he wants to go free range, so he's yeah. tired of his life. I thought the way she manipulated that stimulus material yes. at, at the beginning was, was excellent. You're not trying to find out how good an acrobat uh, the teacher is, you're yeah. trying to find out whether or not the children are learning to juggle. Exactly. Uh, yeah, yeah. And it stimulated lots of adventurous language. It did. Adventurous ideas. language, lateral thinking, all sorts of stuff. There were some lovely ideas coming out. OK. What about this one? This might be a bit more tricky. <laughs> Bible story. No, not exactly. But it is an old story, probably about 3,000 years old. Exactly. What's his name? OK, that's exactly the story. It's the story of Icarus. She's getting some lovely language out, particularly from the back of the room. They're sort of... They're sort of there, they're trying to make up their minds, um, but they're pretty much engaged. I mean, she's got the room. Essentially, your coursework for original writing this half term is to write any story which inspired this, the picture that I'm going to show you. I want you to look at this picture, react to it in any way. <gasps> Gasp. Who gasped? <laughs> Jack. Awesome. All right, there's a reaction. Any other reactions? Screaming. Go on. Hell, Looks like an alien. Hell. Shock. Any other? Like he's, seen, like he's seen something, like he can't believe. Vanessa is valuing their ideas, um, gently pointing them in the right direction. I thought she handled some of the other ideas she heard, which weren't so good. I thought she handled those very sensitively. Nobody was crushed. Everybody was encouraged to get involved. Now, the idea of today is to think of a loose plot around that picture and get ready to share them in pairs. Get some A3 paper. So I'll just stick them on this table. If you just come and just take one and have a glance through some of the ideas. She made them get their own paper, the planning sheet, the A3 planning sheet. Um, now, most of us, and I would put my hand up to this, would give it out. But actually, I think it's right. I think you have to... My own understanding of the way that, that you get independent learning working is it has to be structural. It has to be seeping out of every wall. This picture's going to be up on the board. I want you just to look at it, write down, brainstorm as many ideas as you can on these A3 sheets of paper. As you get your ideas out, you'll find, hopefully, that a plot starts to come up in your mind. Oh, he's committing suicide, because he should have, he's coming through a bad time with his last day. Maybe turned into a ghost? Maybe in person. Saw a ghost slash turning into a ghost. Her cat runs away. 
Um, I mean, listening in, eavesdropping, a good deal of what was being said was very focused on, on, on what it should be. You never know. It might be some sort of creature. <laughs> How's it going over here, boys? Her circulation was excellent. She, Absolutely. She, got to she, everybody. Yeah, she, yes. got ra she got round to everybody. Yep. He saw a ghost, but then he could look into a mirror saying that he's turned into a ghost. Oh. oh. It's 15 minutes into the lesson. Many students have been working well, but the strategies Vanessa's been using are not engaging everyone. <laughs> Once they got on to task, mm -hmm. I became concerned and okay. I wondered that some students might be uh, falling off. Try give, yeah, I want that ticket for Arsenal. She gets knifed to the neck and hit by a baseball bat. <laughs> it seemed to me that 12 out of the 18 students in the room were involved in independent learning, which means that a third of them weren't. Joe, you got your hand up. Um, a suicidal man wants to be taken by a wave because he might be wavy and like um, big waves, and he refuses to be taken because those two people are lifeguards. Okay. <laughs> what if anything would need to be added to that idea? See, that bit was great, but it comes and it goes, doesn't it? It does. I... Yes. Yes. Taking part in class discussions is not a sort of icing on the cake. It's actually, to me as an English teacher, it's absolutely fundamental. You know, you're forced to think on your feet. But what led to that? Yes. The people in the background don't really look like lifeguards. They look like they're in suits. I was thinking to myself, you know, what's the road to independent learning? Mm. Well, modelling's obviously important. Mm -hmm. uh, what does what they're going to write look like? If I wanted to, to get you buzzing, mm -hmm. or get us buzzing, mm. um, on what the scaffolding towards independent learning is like. What would, what would happen at this jump-off point in the lesson? Giving them short pieces of writing, it, it's basically writing to argue and persuade. That's, that's what it is. Every day you get a model, very often in only 50, 60 words, something of that nature. Hmm. I'll be there Saturday. I see her Sunday with Jim. Would you go straight from this to a story, or would you do a storyboard or something in between? Let's each name our top tools for getting towards independent learning. Planning, essential. Um, too many of our lads don't plan. They see it as a kind of impugning of their masculinity if they have a second go at something. I would probably add um, explicit organisation skills, like what do we do in groups, how do we ask questions, how do we support each other, so they've got an idea of, of, the, design of, a, a, of the design of a lesson. And I'm interested in what does she need to do next? Mm. The way I normally run performance management is much less formalised than, 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 I, than I'm feeling that I should be doing today. Um, it's part of a conversation, an ongoing conversation, that starts first thing in the morning and ends when we say goodbye at the end of the day. Nonetheless, her target is to increase independence in, in, amongst the learners in her classroom. Yes, it is. If you do a good job on this feedback, yes. when you walk away from it thinking you've done a good job, what will you have done? I will have empowered her to continue doing the excellent work she's doing and I hope given her one or two um, guidelines as to how to uh, to make it even better. For feedback, John wants to see how far Stephen will press Vanessa to try new techniques to engage all of the boys and whether he'll come up with any concrete ideas for her to use. Some of the responses were excellent, weren't yeah, they? Yeah, I thought so, actually. They were really, really good. Yeah, they were much better than I thought they were going to be, those responses. Right, yeah. And I'm very, very pleased with the way they're approaching this particular piece of coursework. But 12 of them, mm. in my opinion, were clearly engaged. They were either head down writing, reading each other's work, or just discussing, eavesdropping on what they were, they were, they were discussing, um, which, is, which is good. Yeah. There were six that weren't. Mm. Um, I think the question of how we get the other six yeah. working is, is interesting. Any, any thoughts on that? I mean, did, were you aware of that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I noticed, especially when I was going around to some tables, that the noise level on some of the other tables would, would increase and it wouldn't necessarily be about the work. And 
at that time, when I noticed that, short of thinking, I'm gonna go to that table next, I don't really know how else I would get them engaged. What they need is, they need structure. They lack structure. Mm. At the beginning of this year, when we started, the concept of writing an essay was quite alien to quite a few of them. Mm -hmm. And they weren't sure quite how to structure it, what needs to go into an essay. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these skills of just getting ideas down is something that was very, very impossible at the start. Mm -hmm. And over the course well, of this... Not yeah. impossible, because you've, you've managed to yeah. achieve it, yes. Yeah. Yeah. But John's still waiting to see whether Stephen is willing to offer Vanessa some practical advice. I wonder... If, if, if one way of doing it would be, would be ensuring that everybody drafts a piece of, of, of written work. And you could see, you know, yes, he started with this idea. And um, changed. He's changed it, he's, he's, looked at, he's enriched the vocabulary, which is the kind of thing you were telling them to do today. Um, I wonder, there was just an idea. Yeah. How does that seem? And I suppose it's, it's more directly linked with the, that, the idea of independent learning. Yes. I, I probably need to move into a different position. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Some ideas have emerged to help the boys learn independently. <laughs> right. I enjoy that but John much, still but wants to I challenge find Vanessa find and Stephen to give more explicit guidance than they may be willing to. I'm wondering how, how far away they are from being able to respond fully. How could we let the students know what that vision is, or is it something that you work privately towards without sharing with them? No. I think they know how I feel about these things and what I expect them to be. Mm. But, you know, beyond that, um, I don't have a, a set of targets on the wall. Yeah, I'm just wondering yeah. what it would yeah, look like. Yeah, no, yeah. A poster or something on the whiteboard. Yeah, to be one of Mrs. Starr's, I'm good at working in groups, I'm good at assessing my work. Uh, mm. That's something that I don't really do. I do it through speaking to them. So I feel that that is a little bit babyish as well for a year 10 group, as I think. I, I understand Vanessa's uh, reluctance yeah. and reticence uh, about spelling things out to mm. them. Um, I believe long term, the, the best way is to embody them, to model them, mm. which is what you're doing. See, I think you're doing all the right things. <laughs> I, for the life of me, can't see the reason why we can't say to a bunch of 15 or 16 year olds, you want to be successful, you write extended essays, you do inquiry yeah. on your own, you work sure. well in groups, you do this, you do that. Why do, why do you feel that that might be babyish? OK, because I actually think that by making it explicit, you're not actually teaching it to them. I mean, this cliche that I keep mouthing about values are caught, not taught, it's actually something I believe in, because I think I've seen it in myself and I've seen it in other students. The way to really work would be if everybody in the school was able to model the values that we want from the boys in their own way. And that would work. And you wouldn't need to have explicit messages all over the school, because it would all be seeping out the walls, it would be falling out of every cupboard, it would be, it would be everywhere.